wasn't expecting you back so soon. Your benefactors are a generous lot. You earned this. All done? attacked us out of the blue and there's no telling when they might be back you best keep that sword handy said oh! this man's gonna die if we don't get him sorry. martha it's good to see you and you clive jill otto said you've been attacked by a kashik what exactly happened here those skies are what happened not long after they fell dark, we had our first visit. There were hundreds of them. Tried to storm the hill. Only a handful made it up here, but that was more than enough. The rest are still down there now. And while we have a few willing fighters holding them back, they're sorely outnumbered. What do you think, Clive? That we join the fight? I thought you'd never offer. Now, where I need you is the Fallen Gate. That's where the fighting is fiercest. Let the men know you've come to help. Something tells me they'll be pleased to see you. We're on our way. Do you think there are as many as Martha says? More. Boy. Oh, do you? Thanks very much. Much obliged. Thanks very much. There you go. Much obliged. There you go. Much obliged. Take care out there, eh? You don't think they've abandoned us, do you? Barricades we've set up around the town won't hold the Akashic back for long. Good girl. Wounded. We deal with the Akashic first.
These men don't have the look of hired swords. If you've come to rob this place... You are mistaken, my Lord Rosfield. We're here by Madame Martha's leave. How do you know my name? Forgive me, my lord. We're with the Guardians of the Flame. Wadesmen? But how did you come to be here? Where is your commander? So Wade left earlier with a scouting party to find out where the Akashic were coming from. Did he? Take your wounded back to the inn. Martha will see you're looked after. We'll join you anon. And to think you took them for thieves. A fine reward for holding off the horde, that is. When did Wade and his men arrive? Not long after Rosalith fell. The Guardians asked me to shelter some of them that had lost their homes. They were making ready to leave just as the skies turned, and we agreed it was best we stuck together. Mother! Trouble! The scouting party's almost at the lift, but they got a pack of Akashic snapping at their heels! And they got wounded with them! They're not gonna make it! Damn it all. We'll worry about them, Martha. You look after everyone here. If any can still fight, send them to the lift. I will. You two be safe now. I need you to get those who can still walk up the lift to Martha's. But what about... I didn't ask, Oscar. Sir. Sir Wade. Lord Rossfield. If you aren't a sight for sore eyes. Martha seemed to think you might need some help. And by the looks of it... We thought we could sneak by them. But we didn't know there would be so many. How could we have? Behind you! Damn it! We need to get the injured to safety. Do you think we can hold them off? We can certainly try. Are you with us, Sir Wade? Always. Then let's do our duty.
Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. And yet again, you've pulled me from the flames. It's just a pity I keep walking into them. <laughs> you've never been one to shy away from danger, Sir Wade. Like any shield worthy of the name. I see you're all in one piece. Martha! Is something wrong? The lookout saw smoke coming from down Eastpool Way. Too thick to be a hearth. A second horde. Feel like finishing the job? Always. Jill and I will make for Eastpool. You'll need to move the injured without us. Don't you worry about them. The moment my men are safe, I'll follow. Good luck. Ready, go. They're headed for the rest. Have to slow them down. Martha and the others won't be ready. Something's coming! Apologies, my lord. Did I miss anything? Only the first round, Sir Wade. Shall we? Anymore. No. I think that was the last of them. But it won't be long before the next lot arrive. Then we make for Martha as well we can.
What did you find out there? The same as Sir Wade. Scores of Akashic. Well, wherever they came from, they're gone now. Our lookouts say the lowlands are clear. Hopefully we'll have enough time to lick our wounds. How many of your men were injured? A damn sight less than if you hadn't turned up. Thank you. It was a hard-fought victory. But as long as the skies remain dark, I fear the Akashic's numbers are only going to rise. It's not a matter of if the Horde will be back, but when. And whether that's sooner or later, we'll need to be ready. The inn here affords a good view of the land, and is easily defendable. I'd like to make this one of our outposts. What do you say, Martha? You'd have more men to guard the rest. Well, when you put it like that, of course they can stay. My lord, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oscar, over here. It is an honor to make your acquaintance, Lord Rossfield. I am Oscar. Oscar of House Murdoch. Murdoch? I wasn't aware the Lord Commander had children. Oh, he didn't. But his brother... My father did. I am Sir Rodney's nephew. <laughs> well, go on, then. It's not for me to ask him. Yes, Sir Wade. If it please you, my Lord Marquis, might you take me as your squire? I would learn the duties of a shield from the finest. <sighs> I'm sorry to disappoint you, Oscar, but I am a shield no longer, nor was I ever the finest. And spending time in the company of an outlaw hardly seems a fitting education for one aspiring to take his oaths. My Aunt Hannah once told me that a man is not defined by his title, but what he does in its name. You have accomplished much since taking on the mantle of Sid, winning no little honor in so doing. And I would sooner serve under an honorable outlaw than an unworthy sheep. No, not that Sir Wade and the other guardians are. I mean to say that uh, the. It's all right. We know what you mean. There is only so much the boy can learn from me, my lord. But a squire. Would that really be so bad? You were a squire once. And I'm certain Sir Rodney would approve. <sighs> know that I'll show you as much leniency as your uncle showed me. I would not have it any other way! Bloke saying he saw ghosts on the far side of the wall. Welcome, welcome. I'll be here if you need me. I saw it with my own eyes. My lord, my lady. We received the dame's message. There have been sightings of strange creatures, I understand. With the blue eyes. Yes. Like a kashik, but different. 
They've taken so many. I've lost count. Akashic, but different. <sighs> Ultimus Thralls. And what of your mistress? Is she here? Oh, no. She went to the garrison to ask what they were planning on doing about all this. Then we'll look for her there. The garrison's been slaughtered by those things. We lost the captain this very morning. We've tried requesting reinforcements, but there's been no word from the capital or the Dominion in days. What more would you have us do? I would have you do your duty. Those at the Vale look to me for protection. And protect them I shall, because they are my charges and that is my duty. In case you have forgotten, the people of this town are your charges. But more than that, they are your people, your sisters, your brothers, your lovers. So you have a choice. Lay down your sword and watch as they are slaughtered, or take it up and do what is right. She speaks the truth, you know. This here, it's all we have. It's all that's left. What we have left is our lives. Do you really want us to lose them as well? Not if we don't ask to. Look, there's a cask under the captain's bunk. Let's talk about this over a drink, eh? I'm listening. I'll have a word with her. Ah, oh, Clive. I didn't expect help to arrive so quickly. And sought to take matters into my own hands. It was a noble effort, but I thought you might still need some support. I'd like you to consider my needs. <clears throat> what we need to consider is where the creatures came from. The way the survivors speak of them, one would think they appeared out of thin air. <laughs> and perhaps they did. It's hard to know what to believe these days. Hmm. We'll talk to the survivors. You're a pikeman, yes? What happened? I've got family in Moor. I heard the flood was spreading, so... I went to see if they were all right. And a pack of them glowing... things found me in the meadow. I ran for my life. I never did get to the village. Leave that to us. But my family... They're still in the cabin. Me, me, I'm sorry. That thing. It took. Did you see the creatures that attacked you? Creatures? Uh, yeah, I. They came out of nowhere. They went for Josie first, then me, and then. Then they were just gone. Do you remember where you were? On the road from Oriflam. We just passed more when... when... Where's my Joseph? It's all right. Just rest. At least we have an idea of where the thralls might be now. We should head for more. I assume you have a plan? It was all they could do to escape. Let's go. Yeah!
Look. I see them. With me. Do you think there are more? There are always more. But I'd say we've done what we can for the time being. Then we should let Isabel know. You have the town's thanks. Don't thank us yet. There will be more. Many more. And you'll need to be ready for them. Oh, we shall. Isn't that right, Captain? Yes, my lady. The garrison will be ready. Philippe here has convinced most of the men to remain at their posts. For now, at least. <laughs> Hearing that the Dane would look kindly on any man who committed himself to the task certainly didn't hurt. Ah, it's not the most selfless of motives, I'll admit, but whatever it takes, eh? Now me, I never needed to convince him. I became a soldier to protect the people I love. And the people I love include the ones standing before me. <laughs> Handsome and chivalrous. Now, if you don't mind, I have sentries to post. Milady. Lest you wonder, I'm not foolish enough to believe that this has solved all of my problems. But it has solved one, and that's one fewer than I had this morning. Thank you again, Clive.
didn't seem to have things under control. For now, at least. Let's go and put Otto's mind at rest. today, Clive. Is everything we've received and everything promised? You earned this. Best of luck out there, Sid. from all our friends thanking you for your timely intervention. How is it you always manage to arrive at just the right moment? Luck, I suppose. Any word on the rest of the realm? Hmm, let's see. Storm's still crying out for Mother Crystals. The nations are still in chaos. And the skies are still the color of a kick in the kidneys two days on. So... Right. Now's not the time to second-guess yourself. Now's the time to visit the infirmary. Taya says your brother's awake. Thank you, Otto. So it was not Sylvester. Only for his father to take the spear that would have freed him. Enough to drive a man to madness. Small wonder he hasn't stirred. I would be afraid to wake. Had I but reached out to him sooner, warned him of the threat Ultima posed. But now, both an empire and her prince lie broken. Joshua, what do you know of Ultima? Very little, I'm afraid, despite my best efforts. Eighteen years ago, as I lay buried beneath the rubble of Phoenix Gate, it was not death who came for me, but another. And it was while in my rescuer's care I first heard of Ultima. I've been chasing his shadow ever since. Ultima is driven by some deep, dark purpose, and for whatever reason, it would seem you are crucial to his designs. He will stop at nothing to have you, even if that means toppling an empire. But why me? What possible use could I be to such a creature? That is one of many answers that have eluded me. Yet, I am certain of this. It is not mere chance. You were chosen for a reason. All dominants carry within them the might of an icon. Nigh limitless power that is at once acutely limited. I wield fire, and only fire. And I only ice. Eight Wardens for eight elements. But you, Clive... You are different. You're special. Your abilities begin with the flames of Ifrit. But they do not end there. 
The fact a Freed can even exist goes against everything we thought we knew of dominance. Perhaps Ultima has been waiting for one such as you, whose potential is truly limitless. I've encountered that thing several times now. If it or he, as you say, needs me, why hasn't he claimed me as he did the boy? Were I to hazard a guess, I'd say the two of you are somehow incompatible. His mind not properly attuned to your body. His mind? Mind, awareness, spirit, call it what you wish. But I believe Ultima to be an embodiment of the concept. It is why I struggle and fail to contain him here inside me. I'm sorry. Inside you? With every setting sun, I feel my strength wane. And though the Phoenix's flames mend the prison I have made for Ultima, they do so at a cost. We must find a means to bring an end to him before I meet my own. What were you thinking? It was that or let him take Clive. And I've always had a soft spot for my brother. But that doesn't mean you should sacrifice yourself to save me. <coughs> Joshua. <coughs> Clive, it's Gav. <coughs> There's an army of Akashic at the gates of Canver. <coughs> Well, what's the short of it? Myrtle, Tyre told you. The capital of the free cities is under siege by an army of monstrosities. The city guard are doing their best to stem the tide, but numbers ain't on their side. What of Lord Byron and Mid? Were they able to escape? No, but they're all right for now. They're hiding with Gav at midship. We have to get them out of there. Mm. And we shall. Otto, prepare a stolas. Tell Gav to stay exactly where he is. Understood. Vivian, what's the swiftest route to the free cities? <laughs> that sounds like a question for the map. Look here. This road, through Tabor, should provide the least trouble. Good. What a coincidence. Tabor is exactly where I'm bound. Joshua. Bed is where you should be bound. You don't think I told him the exact same thing? Were Taya not such a talented healer, I would surely have been inclined to agree. But, thanks to her ministrations, I feel I may safely rejoin my attendant, who was to wait for me in Tabor if we became separated. All right, we travel together. Clive! If he stays close to me, he'll be fine. Thank you, brother. I'll look after him. Back again? What is it that you wish to learn? I have the details here. Very good. It seems the oh, hideaway is blasted book. Here, you put me in this situation, Clive. You can bloody well get me out of it. I need a hand with a recipe. Are you sure it's me you're looking for? I'm not much of a cook. I'm all the cook will be needing, thank you very much. What I want from you is a little of your time, right? Oh, and uh, perhaps your sword. You remember Ivan's stew, right? Well, despite the look of the thing and that awful stench, people wolf it down. So I thought I'd try making one of these supposed masterpieces myself. Had a peek at the book and gave it a go, but... 
Well... It wasn't as straightforward as you'd hoped. Ivan had the same problem. Yeah, but this is my blooming kitchen, and I will not be outdone. So if you don't want to be seen as playing favourites, I suggest you lend me a hand. I've never been one to play favourites, Molly. And I would be only too happy to lend you a hand. So, what's on the menu this time? A fried mortress of Skyworm. That's one heck of a name, innit? Recipe seemed easy enough to an old hand like myself. Thought I'd followed it to a tea. Only, turns out Skyworm livers and Drake's mint are not what I thought they were. At least I hope they're not, given the rancid mess they made. Ivan said the recipes in the culinary pilgrimage date back centuries. Who's to say the ingredients even exist anymore? Well, that's a question for a scholar, wouldn't you say? Perhaps you know of one? Kindly old fella who haunts the shelves, maybe? Fine. I'll go and speak to Harpocrates. Perhaps he'll know something. And if he does, I'll see if I can find your ingredients for you. You do that. Lest we forget, you've got a reputation to uphold. Will there be... Sid, perhaps you can help me solve a mystery. I can certainly try. Who's gone missing this time? It's not who, but what. Mid scales, the ones she made for her workshop. I borrowed them to teach the little ones about weight, and shortly after the lesson, well, they vanished. My first thought was that they'd taken them off somewhere to play, but when I asked, they swore they had nothing to do with their having disappeared. Which almost certainly means they had everything to do with it. Perhaps a visit from Sid will jog their memories. <laughs> I think it just might. I don't like to imagine that my pupils would lie to me. But if they have, I'll have no choice but to discipline them accordingly. They were in the atrium when I last saw them. As always. Lawsman Harpocrates, I've come to pick your brain if you don't mind. It's about the book you lent Ivan. Ah, Valisthea, a culinary pilgrimage, a classic. One of my favorites, in fact. The young man did a wonderful job with the Chancellor's stew. I do hope we shall be able to sample more such marvels in due course. That's actually why I'm here. I don't suppose you know where I might find Skyworm livers and Drake's mint. Ah. So the fabled San Briquois delicacy is next on the menu. Delightful. The descriptions of fried mortress never fail to make my mouth water. <sighs> now, <laughs> Skyworm is a somewhat antiquated name for the wyvern, their ground livers being the paste from which the mortress is made. Dragon livers. Uh, how very San Briquois. One would have thought the disciples of Bahamut would have a touch more reverence for their icon's brethren, but apparently not. I believe the specific dragon the recipe demands is the blueback wyvern, said to be the very color of the sea beside which it resides. So we know where to look for our liver. But what about the drake's mint? Saint's bonnet, in contemporary parlance, a herb which grows along the North Reach coast. I gather that one can locate the cheerful yellow flowers by their heady scent alone, so I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding them. I may add that people once believed game was best served with the flora that sustained it in life, in which regard fried mortress of Skyworm is undoubtedly a typical dish of the time. Meaning that if I find one, I find the other. To Northreach, then. Best of luck, Clive. And do save me a bite once the cheese. Seems the hideaway has lost its appetite. Did you 
see the pair that got pulled into time? Rutherford? Wasn't that the name of my uncle's manservant? Why would he be at Martha's rest? with your gear, or... What do you want? That it? Fine. What am I gonna do? Is everything all right, Goots? You seem more... discomposed than usual. Oh, I don't know what that means, but, but I'm in a bit of a muddle. Oh, I think Nan might be in trouble and she's... <laughs> it's all right. You can tell me. <sighs> there was a trader came by. One of our usuals, like... Said he'd heard some rotten rumours about her down Dally Mill Way. Folk are saying she's been selling to bandits and cutthroats and that. I mean, she's fond of a chance to make a coin or two, aye, but... But she'd never do business with baddies. Especially not the kind who go hurting people who haven't done out. I wanted to ask her about it myself, but... She'd never give your tongue a lashing, though, would she? Don't worry. I'll speak to her. Oh, thanks, Clive. You'll let me know what she says, won't you? Of course. I'm sure it's all just a misunderstanding. I heard the Emperor was impaled by... gonna die you hear me what do you reckon we should do i say we should just tell miss shirley you'll get us all striped sid out of your studies i see and what is that it's not a set of scales is it no of course it isn't well not anymore, it's not. <gasps> oh. And just how long hasn't it been one? We're sorry. But we didn't break them. We just dis dismembered them. Just like Miss Mididol showed us. Miss Mididol? And why would she have you dismembering her creations? Because that's the only way to become a ninja near. Miss Mididol said. The best way I see how Summit works is to take it apart and put it back together again. Well then, your work is already half done. Carry on. Uh... About that. The taking apart was easy enough, but... 
It's the pudding back we can't work out. Speak for yourself. The heavy thing goes at the bottom. Then... Then... Um... You three need to learn to take responsibility for your actions. So let's have a look at these parts with fresh eyes, shall we? All right. Everything here was once part of Miss Mididol's scales. Every piece has its own role to play, and each is just as important as the others. If even one of them is missing, the scales won't work. So let's think about what those roles might be. You already know one of the pieces. The body. Its role is to support everything else. But what of the others? This is called the arm. Why do you suppose that is? It doesn't look much like an arm. You're right. It looks more like a wing. <gasps> like a chocobo wing! You've ridden a chocobo before, haven't you, Sid? Will you teach me to ride one one day? I'll think about it. Now, what do arms do? Hold things. So wait, maybe this arm holds things too? Good thinking. You're on the right track. These round parts are called the pans. You all know what a pan is, don't you? I do. Molly uses them in the kitchens to fry bangers. But these aren't for frying bangers, you idiot. They're for weighing stuff. But what if I wanted to weigh goots? I don't think you'd fit on that little thing. <laughs> Probably not. What are the chains for? Holding the pans up? Well spotted. Which means something must hold the chains up in turn. This tiny piece is what's called a cogwheel, or gear. Have you ever seen one before? I have. Miss Minidol's dungeon is full of them. Most are on the floor. She puts them in all her inventions. They spin round and round and round and round and... That's right. They're very useful when you want to make things move. Do you remember if there was anything on the scales that moved? I remember the arm moved. When I tried weighing an apple, and then somebody ate it. Not my fault. You shouldn't have tried weighing it before lunch. We know what part's supposed to move, and how it's supposed to move. So, let's put the pieces together first, see what doesn't move, and then stick the cogwheel to that. Not a bad idea. You see, it's not so difficult. So... Now that we've taken stock of the parts and learned what they do, what do you think? I think we've got it. Then here's what we'll do. You tell me what goes where, and I'll put the scales together. Well, obviously you need to start with the body. All the other pieces fit onto it, don't they? And the arms go on the body, just like real arms. Or wings, if you're a chocobo. And then the arms hold the pans by the chains. Very good. Let's see if that works. There. Yeah. All finished. Yes! We did it! Well, with Sid's help. <laughs> oh, I just put the pieces together. It was you three engineers who showed me how. That's right. We missed Mididol's hairs. Her hairs? Yeah, hairs for the future. She's showing us her secrets now, so we can help out the hideaway when we're older. What do you think, Sid? Are we almost ready? With a little more help from Miss Mididol and Miss Shirley, I'd say it won't be long at all. <laughs> you hear that? It won't be long. Until then, though, do try to be honest with Miss Shirley. Wheel. You don't think Sid forgot about it, do you?
Didn't happen to forget anything, did you, Sid? The girls here can have Otto and Gav and Gareth and Cole and us for another. Now, oh, if only Lady Taya would let me into the infirmary to see him. <sighs> I'm getting too old for this. I can hardly lift my arms. The curse, it's... You just need some rest. I'll stay here with you. Well, did you solve the mystery? It was as you thought. The children had the scales, or the parts of them at least. They dismantled them to see how they worked. Ah, oh, no, Mid will have my head. Thankfully she won't. This might even have been her idea. Although I was the one who ended up teaching the lesson. I'm so sorry, Sid. I know how busy you are. I shall see that the children are properly punished. Please, there's no need. Mid seems to have taken the three of them under her wing. She's even calling them her heirs. She'd have them follow in her footsteps. And her father's. I see. Sid, do you know why Mid has been spending so much time at the hideaway of late? She told me it was because her studies had been interrupted by events in Canva. Is that not true? No, it isn't. The university offered her a commission. In exchange for full tuition, room and board, they asked her to oversee the design of several new war engines. To anyone else it would be an opportunity, but to Mid, who lost both her parents to war, it was a bitter pill. One she was none too keen to swallow. But that should come as no surprise. She's only ever cared about bringing people hope. The very last thing war can be said to do. Which explains her airs. She's working to give them a better life. And so should I. What's the odd engineering lesson? Ah, oh, you've given them far more than that. And I'm sure they're very grateful. Lady Karen, how's business? Not nearly as foul as the weather. You're doing good trade then, both in and out of the hideaway? Hmm. Can't complain. Wait, what exactly are you getting at? Not once in five long years do you pay my affairs half a care. But here you are today, raking me over the coals like a bloody popotto. Just asking. Out of interest. All right. I'm here because I was told that certain rumors have been circulating. 
about you selling weapons to brigands. Oh, are you? And who was it who knows me so well as to tell tales of my evil exploits? I... I, I didn't exactly hear firsthand. All I know is that someone in Dalamil has been spreading word to that effect. And what? You believe it? You think I'm profiting off the blood of innocence, do you? Look, I've done things I'm not proud of. Might be there were a time when I turned a blind eye to the wretchedness of the world so I could line my pocket. But that woman is no more. And you'd know that if you'd ever paid the slightest bit of notice. You're right, Lady Karen. I apologize. It was wrong of me to doubt you. No, it was. No. I reckon you've got better things to do than pointing your do-gooding finger at a poor old woman. Of course. Good day. I spoke with Lady Karen. What did she say? That the rumors were unfounded, and that I was a fool for thinking they might hold any truth, along with some other things that made her feelings clear. And while did in her past, she says those days are behind her. Ah, oh, well, that's good. I knew Nan wasn't caught up in out bad. Why would people say she was? What did she ever do to them? It's not right. No, it's not. But people do things for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps we'll never know. Well, I'm going to find out. That trader, he said they were all talking about her in Dalimil. So that's where I'm going. I'll find someone who'll tell me, you'll see. Are you sure that's wise? Whoever's spreading these rumors means Karen ill. Oh, right. But that's why you'll be coming with me, isn't it, Clive? <sighs> I suppose it is. It's like a dream, the four of us out walking like we used to. Enjoying this, are you? Gav and the others could be in danger as we speak. You're right. I'm sorry. Yoto is a fine scout. If Candle was attacked, she will already have begun gathering information. Tabor isn't far. We should pick up the pace.
Bandits may be known. It shouldn't be too hard to find goods. The gentlemen of the town guard are strapped. Could be I know something more. Clive, listen! I've found someone who says he's heard the rumors about Nan. Have you? Go on. Tell him what you told me. All right. It's like I said. A wizened old crone by the name of Karen's been selling steel to whoever will pay her price, be they knight or knave. Says the more swords and spears she puts in people's hands, the more war they'll wage. And the more war being waged, the more call for swords and spears. And who will they all turn to to keep them in steel? Why, the good Reaper herself. <laughs> and you've seen this Reaper at work? Aye, it just so happens I have. You'll find her right here, plying her trade most days. Here in Delamil. Where exactly? She has a stall here in the market, but if you're not the patient type, you can probably find her at her storehouse on the edge of town. But it'd be a bolder man than me that braved that particular nest of vipers. Feeling bold, traveler? I hope so, for your sake. Now, if that's all, I have places to be. Sorry to have kept you. You don't think Nan's the Reaper, do you? Well, unless she's discovered the secret of how to be in two places at once. Eh? What do you mean? Lady Karen hasn't left the hideaway in weeks. So who has been running this stall he spoke of? Good question. I'll go and have a look. And I'll visit this storehouse on the edge of town. All right, but be careful, Clive. You too, Goods. Time to brave the viper's nest. Just you, is it? <sighs> Thought I might have laid it on a bit thick. It was a fairly unconvincing tale. So, what now? That's up to you. Die a slow death? Or a quick one. Boys, he's all yours. But that sword is mine. <laughs> Pretend this didn't happen.
you've done it now. Go on. Tell me what I've done. When the Borgwin finds out you've killed his men, he'll have your head. He only wanted that bull of a manservant, the dim one always clinging to Karen's skirts. You weren't even supposed to be here. Who the hell are you anyway? What were you going to do to him? The Borgwin wanted him to get to Karen. I was only supposed to point the lump in the right direction once he arrived in Dalamil. But then you turned up. Well, go on then. If you're going to end me, end me. You're not worth the effort. Now be gone. Before I change my mind. <laughs> Fucking coward! I need to find Goot. Right now. Get your filthy paws off me, you naughty painted lout! Stop calling me names! And stop spreading them honorable lies about Nan! <laughs> well, that will be easy enough. For they are not lies. Every last word is true. And she must pay for her crimes in blood! <laughs> Lord! Goot, are you alright? He, he, he's gonna kill Nan! He said she had to pay in blood! After what she did, it is only right. She ruined my life and the lives of countless others. That loathsome harpy's very existence is a crime, and I will not allow it to continue. Goots, was it? I have no quarrel with you. Only with your employer. Run along now. You need not pay for her sins. No. No? I don't care what she did. I won't let you hurt Nan. Promise me you won't hurt her. Or I'll... Or I'll... Or I'll kill you myself! Goot, no. Enough, all of you! But how did you? <laughs> You're a sight less clever than you think you are, the pair of you. Did you think I wouldn't notice the two of you slinking off together? Well, the whole thing got me thinking. Who in Dalamil might bear me a grudge? And a certain snivelling shit I ran afoul of in me fairy years came to mind. Though it was just Bogan back then, won't it? I thought the years might have taught you some sense. But I see you're the same. What was it we called you? Wet legs. Everything that happened, it was all... And now you'll finally pay for what you did to me! Goose, you... If you want a piece of Nan, you'll have to go through... Fuck! You great galoot! Out of the way, I can So, you remember what you told me? An eye for an eye. Wise words, sir. And now, it's... No! I can't! No! Sorry to keep you waiting. Is he... Dead? It's an easy going through life, one eye shot of a pair. After all, I should know. You don't mean... Oh, don't tell me you didn't know. Lost it to old wet legs back when we were working the same route. Said I'd stolen from his strong box. I'd done nothing of the sort, mind. But that didn't stop him, so I took some of my own. Sorry lost everything. His coin... He's got a crossed a line dragging. He didn't hurt you, did he? No, Nan. Still, but. Well, if he does, first we take the other eye, then we work our way down. Yeah, but something tells me the wet le Right. Let's get you back to the hideaway. You've attracted quite a. Remind me never to cross you.
Ready, go. Fly, Ambrosia. This won't be easy.
fate seem bent on driving me from my inn. My lord, Marcus, it, it is you. Then you received my letter. I am Sebastian Rutherford, chief steward of your lord uncle's estate. Of course. We met once before. Yes, my lord. Thank you for coming. And what was so sensitive that you couldn't put it in writing? A thousand apologies, my lord. I did not mean to offend. I merely... It's all right. Continue. I am here at Martha's Rest, at the behest of your lord uncle, tasked with learning what I am able of the realm's current state of affairs. And what I have learned is grim. The fall of the Mother Crystals has left Storm in a state of utter disarray. The subsequent darkening of the heavens has only made things worse. Akashic attacks, once unthinkable, are now commonplace. The gears of governance have ground to a halt, and without a steady hand on the tiller, the realm threatens to drift into utter chaos. Your lord, uncle, however, believes there is a way to avoid this fate and is determined to see it set in motion. That sounds like quite the undertaking. It is. Hence my having enlisted the aid of several colleagues serving the Seven High Houses. Alas. Alas. I have lost contact with two of those colleagues already. They are both able-bodied and trained in the sword. Yet in these dark times, even that may not prove sufficient to keep a man safe on the road. So you want me to find them? I'll need to know where they went. One I sent to investigate the Republic, the other the old Imperial capital of Oriflam. That doesn't exactly narrow it down. I suppose I'll start in Dalamil and work my way east. Thank you, my lord. I shall pray for your success and safety. Nothing like a little unrest. There were ghosts at the gates, not the days. You needn't fret. The creatures are... Then. Come on, faster. Enough of you. Pockety said I should be able to find what I'm looking for somewhere nearby. Bright blue dragons and bright yellow flowers. Easy enough to spot.
That's the wyvern's liver. Now I just need to find the herbs. Bright yellow with a heady scent. I think that's everything Molly needs to resurrect her recipe. Better head back. It's not going to be easy finding one man in an entire Republic. Let's hope someone here has seen something. The bad men are going to come back. The gentleman of the town guard. Anything I can interest you in? My thanks. Fare you well. Faster! Someone's got himself in trouble. I don't see your master here, so you can start by giving us all the coppers in your purse. I already told you, I have nothing. <laughs> then maybe we'll take that pretty outfit and the steel you're wearing. Uh, uh, please, these men are trying to rob me. I'll deal with this. Thank you. You that one's master then? If you kindly pay the coin he owes us, we can pretend you didn't draw your blade on Republican soldiers. Or you can go back to your garrison and I won't report you to your captain. Oh, you're more than welcome to. He hasn't had many visitors since we slit his throat. Expect as much from Hugo as faithful, but these were men of the fist. Much has changed in the Republican army since they lost their rock. You've seen this kind of thing before, then? Many times. I was sent here to observe the situation. You're one of Rutherford's men. He sent me to look for you. Well, then you have my thanks. I fancy I could defend myself against one, perhaps two, but a whole regiment. I arrived in Dalamil several days ago, but when I called upon a captain of the local garrison to make inquiries, his men confiscated my effects and locked me in a cell. The captain is no more, and his men make the rules now. Fortunately, I was able to bribe my way free, only to be stopped again by those soldiers you so kindly dispatched. What of the Fist Central Command? Surely they wouldn't allow such lawlessness amongst their ranks. I would imagine they are unaware of it. Most of the army has fallen back to the capital and hunkered down behind her walls. Those who weren't recalled now rule the fringes unchecked, answering to no one but themselves. Then it's worse than we imagined. You should return to Rosaria. It's not safe here. I'll find a caravan heading north. 
You won't mind if I borrow one of these soldiers' coin purses? Not at all. Now, to find this second associate of Rutherford's, if he was bound for Oriflam, I'll start at Northreach and see if I can pick up his trail. There's a lot of road between here and the capital. Rutherford's man could be anywhere. What happened here? If you're with the others, They've already relieved me of my belongings. I'm not. I'm looking for someone who was sent here by a man named Rutherford. And then you found him. I am Alastair Rockford, attendant to the Lady Ariane of House Wellesley. Of the seven high houses of Rosaria. It's been a long time since last I saw my great aunt. Is she well? My Lord Marquis? Uh, yes. Yes, she is. The Lady Dowager has granted me leave to assist your Uncle Stuart. I was on my way back from the old capital when I saw some villagers being robbed on the road here. Bandits. They looked more like field hands, but it didn't matter in the end. I did what I could to help the victims, but all it earned me was a pommel to the temple. Which way did they go? South, toward the gate. All right. I'll take care of them. Founder knows I've met enough of their kind. You head back to Northreach. Visit the Vale. Tell them I sent you. Thank you. I shall. Founder be your shield. Fly, Ambrosia. They just couldn't resist, could they? This one's ours, pretty boy. Finished. 
Make for the town while you can. There may be more bandits nearby. You don't need to tell me twice. Many thanks, traveler. This looks to be all of them. I thought I told you to make for the Vale. And stand by as ill might befall the heir to the Ducal Throne. It's just Clive. And I'm fine, which is more than can be said for you. I will survive. Strange that the garrison wouldn't intervene in such a brazen attack so close to their gates. The garrison have their hands full inside the city. Some days they don't even send out patrols. There are few hands left to work the fields, and even fewer to transport the grain. The market stalls are nearly bare, and the price for what remains is exorbitant. It's not uncommon to see a fight break out over a crust of bread. When I said the ones who attacked me didn't have the look of bandits, I meant it. They were probably just desperate. Rockford, listen to me. If you are to continue your investigation, you first need to seek the attention of a healer. I... I shall return to Northreach right away, but allow me to thank you first. Had you not happened along... I don't thank me. Thank Rutherford. It was he who sent me. I suppose he'll be wondering where I've got to. I shall send a Bastolus as soon as I'm able. My uncle certainly has his work cut out for him. If it isn't already too late. I should go and tell Rutherford that his colleagues are still in one piece. still here. The rest's location affords a constant flow of traders, and with it a constant flow of information. Speaking of which, I received word from both my associates. They have resumed their investigations, thanks to you. I only happen to be in the right place at the right time. They both seem to think the realm's prospects rather grim. I am afraid that grim would be put. Storm is in crisis, and if we are to free her, we must and we must work together. Such is your Lord Uncle's will. As it is mine. Seems the hideaways lost its app. So, did you- I did, and he was as helpful as ever. And what precisely will I be cooking up? Or is it better not to know? Blueback wyvern liver. And, uh, a herb known as Saint's Bonnet. Ah, wyvern livers, was it? Well, at least it weren't actual worms, I suppose. Now then. You stay right where you are. I've got some cooking to do. Let's hope these grand old chefs of yore knew what they were on about. And here we have it. Fried Mortress of Skyworm. Ivan's offered to make sure it's fit for consumption. Well, I say offered. He as good as begged. And rightly so. Is there any higher honour than partaking in a slice of culinary history? <coughs> so.
So, not fit for consumption, then. What? What witchery is this? The crackle of the crust gives way to an almost violent richness. Yet, it is the piquant kiss of the saint's bonnet that tames this savage dish. It is a tour de force, a force of nature even, a maelstrom of flavor and sensation, a graceful beast emerging from centuries of slumber. I think he likes it. Well, I can't quite tell with all that nonsense he's talking, but I reckon you might be right. It was decent then, I take it. Decent? It's remarkable. And I defy any man to say a word to the contrary. Sid, might I suggest that you command a party of your finest men and women to procure a dozen blue bat wyverns forthwith? I'll give it some thought. like a dish of cold vengeance to foul the gut. Uh, I'm sorry, Nan. I, I didn't mean to make... I just thought I had to... Aye. Well, someone had to. Your parents certainly didn't give a whit for your well-being. Reckon the both of us would be worse off if I'd not taken you on. You've always been me right eye, Goots. And I'd have you stay that way. So don't you dare go looking for trouble again. Well, I will. If you ever need help, I'll do it again, and again, and you can't stop me. Why, you big lump. Fine. Play the hero if it makes you happy. Thanks, Nan. I won't let you down. There's nothing he wouldn't do for you. That's as maybe. But if he's ever to make his own way in life... He'll need to start looking out for himself as well. Till then, he'll need people to watch his back, just like you did in Dallamill. Don't think I didn't appreciate that. Of course. His family. Stop it. You make me one good eye, mister. I don't go thinking that'll do you any favours. A potion today will cost you the same as it did yesterday. Good girl. Fly, Ambrosia. We can use the ruins to cross the ravine. Assuming they will allow it, the Echoes have a will of their own.
Tell us about the military, Joshua. She's strong-willed, loyal, and deadly with a blade. Much like Clive, but with better manners. you now then? Bound for the free cities, bro? You're injured. What happened here? Where are your comrades? Ether flood. Up ahead. It swallowed our camp while we slept. My own men did this. There's a village not far from here. We can... I'll go. Rest well, soldier. You said the encampment was close. Let's hope the Akashic are still there. Come on. Faster! Another ether flood. They're everywhere now. We can't go around it. Then we'll just have to be careful. Good. I got here in time. Someone there! Please, I, I can't move my leg! That doesn't sound like an Akashic. You're with the battalion? I am. I heard the fighting. Are the others taken care of? One of your brothers in arms told me what happened and asked for help. Another survivor? His wounds were too deep. <sighs> he was right to send you. Those things. You stable is safe thanks to you. You seem familiar. You must have me confused with someone else. Wait. That scar, son of a whore. You're Sid. I was there in Kostnis when you killed my brothers. I was there in Rosalith when you killed my commander. 
My war with Hugo Kupka is over. I bear no ill will toward those who followed him. What of my ill will? Coward! Draw your steel. Lord Kupka shall be avenged! When your wounds have healed and your head has cooled, come and find me if you must. Though I hazard your life would be better spent in service of those who need it. Or have you forgotten your oath to the Republic? My oath? What would you know of oaths? I know how hard they are to keep. Which is why I'm giving you the chance to keep yours. No. <laughs> I won't be deceived. Lord Kupka told us of your crimes. You are an outlaw. A murderer, not some... Some... Man. Like you or anyone else. I am nothing like you. But if you're not gonna kill me, then go. Leave! Just know that I will find you, Sid. Someday. We're nearly there. Have you been to Tabor before? There are a few places I haven't. Welcome, travelers. We don't get many visitors here in Tabor. Where now, Joshua? There is a residence just inside the city gates. She awaits us within. My Lord Marquess, it is an honor. I am Yote, Knight of the Undying, charged with the protection of His Grace Joshua Rosfield, Keeper of the Flame of the Phoenix. Uh, of course. It all makes sense now. Would you care to elaborate? 
The Undying are loyal servants to the Ducal Throne. Or more specifically, to its heir. They have served our family for generations, albeit from the shadows. Since their inception, they have been tasked with the preservation and enactment of the rites of ancestral communion. After the events at Phoenix Gate, it was the Undying who delivered me to safety. And since the day I left Rosaria, Yote has been my constant companion and protector. Without her sword, I would not have survived my journey across the realm. Rise, Lady Yote. You saved my brother. I owe you a debt I can never repay. I but did my duty. Come now. Tell us what you've discovered. Your Grace. It is as you feared. The vessel we spied off the coast of the Crystalline Dominion on the night of her fall. It was the Einherjar. Beyond any doubt. The Black Galleon. Joshua. The Einherjar is the Royalist flagship. What business would they have in the Dominion? Uh, upon learning of Walud's involvement in recent events at Drake's Fang, I sensed the malign influence of Ultima, and bid Yote and the Undying look into the matter. We have reason to believe that the Black Galleon weighed anchor shortly after the fighting began, and set a course due south. For Canva? Then it is Waluda knights who besiege the cities. What is left of them? Yes. And the Black Galleon sails at but one man's behest. Barnabas Tharm. But are we truly safe here in the Agora? The city guard have been paid, if that's what you're implying. All the more reason for them to run. Well, you are free to leave, Lord Minister. Markets abandoned, warehouses aflame, blackened hulls choking every port in the capital. Canva is ruined. The Rome teeters on the brink of chaos, and all you can think about is commerce! Forgive us. We were not aware Dalmechia now subsisted on charity. Not quite. How dare you? Distinguished members of the Council, you must forgive His Majesty this intrusion. What did you... What is the meaning of this? A trifle crowded, but I fear it will have to serve, my liege. Very well. My colleagues, do you not see? The king, he has come to save us from the Akashi. is a gift from the heavens, divine intervention, our very salvation. And of course, if it is compensation he requires, we would be most willing to negotiate a fair price for services rendered. Fools. Your ignorance unbecomes you. Your Majesty, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would swear that the fiends washing the cobbles of Canva with the blood of her citizens wear the colors of Walud. <laughs> ha! So you do not deny it. Guards, fetter them, and see our guests to the dungeons! Enough.
that you should imagine yourselves worthy of salvation. The girl is still here, somewhere in the city. Her consciousness fair dripping with her late father's hubris. A consciousness to which Muthos is inextricably bound and inexorably drawn. See that he is made welcome. Yes, your majesty. Come, Muthos. Surely the prince's light cannot have sated you. So then, how long has Walud been under Ultima's control? How long indeed? Based on what we know of Barnabas' actions, I would guess some few years, mayhap more. But to what end? What does Ultima want? The tapestry. Show them. Gate, Drake's breath, and now here. But what is it? It is old, ancient, even. Nought remains of the faith it represents, save what can be gleaned from the image itself. None could tell me what the one in the apodotry meant, even the undying. But I believe it may be the key to discerning Ultima's purpose. That figure in the center. The one beneath whom the icons congregate, that I believe to be Ultima. He is a god, or at least godlike. His very existence beyond our ken. The icons, and by extension their dominance, are meant to be his subjects. And while some, like Barnabas, have accepted this role, others have rejected it. Like you, Clive. Which is rather inconvenient, as it appears he needs you most of all. And gods don't like to be disobeyed. No, I don't suppose they do. Clive, may I tell Yote of the lake? By all means. Yote, I will be accompanying my brother to the free cities. Whilst we are afield, I would have you watch over those Clive has made his wards. Omiya lost Delan to his sag Ilith. Though well concealed, the hideaway lacks trained fighters to defend its occupants should they be discovered. But it is my duty to... As it has ever been my brother's duty, remember. If... if that is your wish, your grace. But please be safe. If aught were to befall you, I... You have my word. Farewell, my lord, my lady. We are in your debt, Yote. Let's find our friends.
explained she cares for you very deeply. And I her, which is why I had to let her go. Welcome, welcome. Anything else? A fine choice. Of course. Take care. Opportunity beckons. Who among you is bold enough to heed her call? Is that blade for hire, perchance? Because I have a mind to make a killing. Figuratively, I hope. Well, yes and no. A passing caravan carried with it a rumor most fortuitous for one in my trade, that an elder Dread Evis had been sighted in the fields of Carava. Dread Evis are aggressive beasts. Compelled as they are to acts of violence, few survive to maturity, but those that do develop a hide of phenomenal value. A hide you want to sell? Eventually, yes. Though, I would have it tanned first that it dread Evis skin is a rare thing indeed. But the worked hide of a well-aged beast? Now, that would bring me that beast's skin, and I will share with you the bounty of our combined labors. All right. I'll hunt your Evis. Of course you will. When one lives in such troubled times, it is a fool who lets opportunity slip his grasp. Leave Tabor through the East Gate, but take the path that branches west. Once you reach the checkpoint, I eagerly await your...